one of the first things that jumped out at me when I bought my first Fuji camera last year, the X-T30, was how freaking small the body is. From pictures I saw online, I was expecting it to be a decent bit larger, but the problem is that crazy small camera only stays portable when you don't attach a huge lens to the front. So I quickly started searching for a pancake lens I can use with the X-T30 to make it as portable as possible. The first two that came up were Fuji's X-F 27mm of course and the X-F 18mm. Some lenses by TT Artisan also came up like their autofocus 27mm lens. Apparently Foglender also has a 27mm lens. You can see all of these lenses are in a very similar focal length range, which is a bit boring to be honest. Don't get me wrong, I love my XF27 and its 40mm full frame equivalent focal length, but it's not exactly the most unique or exciting. But there is one lens that not only is crazy small, but also really unique, and for some reason nobody seems to know about this lens, the Lawa 10mm Cookie. It's weird to me that nobody is talking about this lens. When you search for a Fuji pancake lens online, it just doesn't come up. And when I was contacted by Venus Optics asking if I want to test and review this lens, the first thing I did was look it up because I had no idea it existed. It's just like with chocolate covered raisins. Sometimes somebody just has to tell you about something before you realize what you've been missing. So here a quick disclaimer. This lens was supplied to me by Venus Optics for testing and for me to make a review video about it. And that's it. Everything I say in this video stems from my own thoughts, no money exchanged hands, and I never make any promises to companies about what I will say in a video. So with that out of the way, Chris and I grabbed our favorite children, I, I mean XT30s, and headed to an abandoned industrial park. The Lawa 10mm is very high quality, it's completely made out of metal, the focus ring is smooth and adjusting the aperture ring has a really satisfying feel. Yes, this lens is fully manual. That means you might miss focus every now and then, but it also means you are a lot cooler than the other photographers, because doing stuff manually means you are better. Or at least that's what I gathered from the coffee nerd spending 35 minutes tweaking the pressure and looking at the gauges of their espresso machine, hoping it's not gonna blow up again. I have the lens for the Fuji X mount, but it's also available for basically all of the other popular mirrorless mounts. The lens is incredibly small as you can see, it only protrudes 25mm and weighs 130 grams, even though it entirely consists of metal and glass. For a full metal build everyday lens, it doesn't get more compact than this. And Lawa probably call it the cookie because it is actually the size of a small cookie. You can open the aperture up to f4, which might not sound like a lot, but at 10mm you're not gonna get a lot of subject separation anyways and for low light you might want to use a tripod to get the cleanest image or just use your flash the built-in flash on the xt30 is great and combining an ultra wide angle lens plus a flash is one of my favorite looks it can focus super close as well down to 10 centimeter which is about half a banana this allows you to get some crazy cool perspectives one thing I haven't really talked about yet is just how insanely wide this lens is, despite it being this small. This lens is the world's widest APS-C rectilinear pancake lens. Basically rectilinear means it keeps all of the lines in your image straight, while non-rectilinear lenses that are this wide just warp everything around the edges, as you can see in this comparison I yoinked from Wikipedia. I was going to shoot a comparison like this myself to compare these two lens types, but the 90s called me yesterday and they needed the distorted lens pack for a music video they were shooting. If you're interested in architecture, landscape or street photography, then a rectilinear lens is probably the way to go.
I usually shoot mostly color photos, but in a location like this I feel like super contrasty black and white was the right move. Actually, these images are all straight out of camera. I've shot them using a custom film simulation recipe I've developed and dubbed Punchy BNW, with the BNW of course meaning banana waffle. I can already see all of the comments. Oh, can you tell us the recipe? So we're gonna make it a trade, okay? I have the settings here in my hand. I'm gonna show you the recipe if you subscribe to my channel. Okay, are you subscribed? But no lying. Okay, let's make this a bit bigger. Okay, yep, okay, yep. Here you go. You can now screenshot it or pause the video. No, wait, I don't want to be in your screenshot. Every now and then I come across a situation that I would classify as photography on easy mode. And this is one of those days. Sometimes just everything comes together, a cool location, the right conditions and the right gear choice. Wherever you point your camera it just looks epic. It's like stealing your siblings snacks. You just eat them all and pretend afterwards you didn't know they belonged to them. It's that easy. The Lawa cookie is absolutely perfect in this industrial park where it just feels like you're photographing from the inside of a giant machine. Which basically is what's happening here. But yeah, there just are endless photo opportunities here. You could go all day here without getting bored. I paid for Chris's lunch hoping he would forget that I had not yet paid him for the day of filming and then we started exploring some other areas of the park which were a bit greener and I decided to mix in some color shots as well here. By the way, these color shots are edited with my Analog Vibes Lightroom preset pack. If you want to help me keep this channel alive and get a nice set of presets while doing so, you can pick them up for just 5 bucks at the link in the description. The lens has a fair bit of rainbow flaring when hit from this side, nothing drastic and I think it looks pretty cool. Just a quick correction here, I realized that when the light hits the lens from the side in just the right angle, the rainbow flaring gets a lot more prominent. Though that can be mitigated pretty easily by just slightly changing the angle you're holding the camera at. Getting sun stars is pretty easy with the Lawa 10mm when shooting directly into a strong light source, giving you a nice uniform star with 10 points that isn't overpowering. The lens is quite sharp at the center, towards the corners that sharpness is quickly lost though, and vignetting also sets in which is not ideal. But the vignetting can be corrected in post and personally, when it comes to ultra wide angle lenses I always favor lower distortion over sharpness or vignetting. Because distortion isn't just an image quality metric, it makes your images look all wonky, which can be really displeasing in the context of architecture or street photography. Lawa is known for controlling the distortion of wide angle lenses extremely well and I can imagine there had to be some sort of trade-off when making such a tiny and wide lens, especially for the price. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention the price. The Lava cookie comes in at 409 euro here in Germany or 299 dollars in the US, though that price doesn't include tax of course. There is no doubt in my mind the Lava 10mm f4 cookie would be a really fun everyday lens for a lot of people out there and that's why I'm baffled that there barely is anybody talking about this lens online. It is super wide with extremely good build quality that has been compressed into a crazy small form factor by what seems to be magic, I don't know. <laughs> if you want an ultra wide everyday lens that never gets in the way and makes your camera kit extremely portable, this is it. 
not just by default, because there really isn't any competitor in this range, but because it's actually a good lens. Of course, the cookie is not without a few trade-offs, but nobody can deny this is a super unique and fun lens for a pretty good price. If you're interested in more Fujifilm gear, then why not check out one of my other videos? And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye!